Oh my goodness, welcome to Mama's Cookbook. Um, it's the holiday season and um, when I married my husband, we learned about a new Icelandic tradition. This is an Icelandic dessert and it's always made during the Christmas holidays. Well, this recipe was uh, given to us by my husband's Aunt Dora Osfjord. It was passed on by her mother, whom we called Grandma Thori. And Christmas would never seem right without a Vina Terta. So today we're going to learn how to make a Vina Terta. You're gonna love it. Okay, we're going to start by cooking prunes. And this is going to be 32 ounces. You can have 32 to 36 ounces of prunes. One cup of sugar. One teaspoon ground cinnamon. One teaspoon vanilla. I'm going to add water to cover and slowly simmer this, barely covering. Your prunes should barely be covered with water. Okay, now this has been simmering not too long, maybe 10, 15 minutes, and I'm smashing it. And now that it's all, you see, nicely smashed, then we can move on to the cake part. Or the, it's actually a cookie part. <laughs> it's delicious. Let's get our Viking going, shall we? All right, now we're gonna make the dough for the uh, cake or cookie part. So this is two cubes of softened butter, and I'm just going to add one and a half cups of sugar and incorporate the creaming together, the butter and the sugar. I'm sure if you don't want to do it old school, there are other ways to do it, but we're doing it old school, the way I was shown. Then I have two eggs that have been beaten. Beat well, incorporate those. Now I like to put the baking powder, and it's one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and one teaspoon of cardamom. It has to be cardamom to be Icelandic. So I'm gonna incorporate that now. Now I'm going to start adding four cups of flour, four tablespoons of milk with one teaspoon of honey. And the way you incorporate it is a little flour and mix, and a little milk mixture and mix. Then you add more flour, more milk. This is actually, I'm calling it milk, but it's actually half and half. I'm sure if you wanted to use full cream, that would work too. See how the dough's coming? And more flour. More milk. Last of the milk. And then I'm just going to form the dough into a ball. And this is where the hands come in. Finish the last, in last incorporation with your hands. You're going to have to make six or so balls out of this. So I usually start try to get one good one and then start dividing so I see if I can't make them even. And if I'm really particular, I'll weigh the balls, weigh the dough, and make them all the same. But I find that this is an imperfect kind of dessert, so you can use the guesstimation method. There we have it. Nice dough. Now I'm going to make, I think, six 
uh, balls out of this. And that'll be my next step. I'm going to wrap them and then into the refrigerator they're going to go for, uh, I'd say, a good half hour. Okay, there we go. All right, parchment paper, flour, lightly, little flour on this and roll, roll it out. I'm going to try to get it about a quarter inch thick. into the oven at 425 degrees for four minutes until the edges are nice and brown. There you go, cookies ready. We just need six of them done and then we can assemble. Well, we've got the six cookies uh, baked. Made sure that it was uh, brown around the edges to make sure they're done. Some took a little over four minutes and I, it just depends on your oven and opening and shutting the door. But they're done, they're cool, and so now we're ready for the filling. So let's start the filling. I charge, chose the large one for the bottom, the largest one for a bottom piece. They do crack and break easily. So if it does, just keep going. Just keep going. And don't worry too much about this, the edge part because what we'll do when we're finished is cut it and make it a nice uh, shape, okay? And I'm gonna take the next big one, see if I can do it without breaking it, and set it on top. And then fill this one. Oh look, I just broke it. Still gonna be good. You just need a thin little layer and on to your next top. Okay, here's one that actually cracked in half. So I'm gonna put it in the center and I'm still gonna fill it. That's it, we're done. And now I'm going to cut around the edges to um, form it. But I honestly like to let it sit overnight before I do that cutting. And that's my recommendation. Just let it sit. So at this point, you take a dish towel and just put over the top and let it sit. That's it, a vina terta, or terta for short. It's Icelandic Christmas cake. It's time to get your Viking on. Okay, I'll, I'll show you when it's completely looking nice, when I cut the edges. All right, all right, it's easy, and it really is good, really good. All right, you'll be amazed. See ya. Okay, so I'm trying to trim the Vina Terta now. It's been a few days, I think three days or four days. It should really go a week before I do this, but I thought I'd show you the layers. Can you take a look at those layers? And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just try to even it out to make a nice little square. And I'll, I'll place the square on a nice serving plate. Meanwhile, I'll take these little pieces that I'm cutting off and I'll put them here on a plate for people to yum, 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 yum on. Because nothing is wasted on a vina terta. It is so delicious. And it shows you a couple different ways that you might want to serve it. You might want to cut it in individual pieces. And yes, my hands are clean. And like these odd shapes here can just go over to the side for munching on later. And I think I'll cut one more here because I have broken on the top 
So I'm going to cut one more going across. Now the nice thing about Bina Terta is that you can make it two, at least two weeks before you're ready to serve it to anybody. The longer it sits, the better it is. It soaks up, the crust soaks up the filling and the cookie gets even better. I think this is called a tart, but you know, it seems, I don't know what you want to call it. You can call it a cookie, you can call it a tart, you can call it a cake, you can call whatever you want. So I'm just gonna cut the little ends for right now into little grab and go pieces, which is a nice way to serve it for your family or friends. And these are the grab and go pieces. I'll just put on a plate over here because I want to make room so I can grab this and hopefully I get it on the other plate. Okay, so here's a grab and go plate. And let's see if I can't get this on. There I go. And I need a bigger plate, don't I? But you get the idea. See the layers? They are so yummy, and I know my cameraman has been waiting for three days to get to taste it, so I'm gonna have him come over and get a piece. All right. Come grab a piece. Get that big, big piece. piece. Get a big piece. What's this big piece right Yeah, here. that big piece. Well, it's two pieces, but. Yeah, yeah. it's two pieces, All right. but you're, you can do it. I'm gonna eat it like a sandwich. Okay. Mmm. I really like it. It's, like, mm -hmm. it's fruity and mm -hmm. like cookie. Mm -hmm. You have the cookie, it's like a filled cookie, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's kind of like an Oreo, but except like... Without the cream and mm -hmm. without the chocolate. Instead of the, <laughs> the cream and chocolate, it's cookie and... Uh, Whatever it is, you'll mm -hmm. eat it. <laughs> I know. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do something different, if you want to get your Viking on, you'll make a vina terta at Christmas time. It is a traditional Icelandic cake. Okay, well, happy eating and have a merry holiday. <laughs> Bye guys.